Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending this uh, webinar on the uh, PWS 4500, um, end of January. So, um, just give you an update where we are uh, with the the Sony multi multi port AV production server. Um, my name is Andy Hotton. I'm product manager for the the server based in uh, Basingstoke, in England. So, I'd just like to highlight some of the applications and configurations of the system for you um, and you know how it is being used by our customers um, so the the server the 4500 is a, a very versatile box which can be suitable for master recording um, it is a good solution also for sports replay operations um, and also sits at home for ingest uh, material ingest content management uh, and playout solutions um, it can work in HD it can work in 4k um, it uses XAVC recording as the native recording on the disc um, and will interface with many third parties including EVS, um, Avid and Adobe Premiere. Um, just as a sort of highlight, we have many units now sold. It's close to 250 actually today um, and just some of our European customers uh, noted on there using it for a variety of different things from playout to sports replay to ISO cam recording um, all across our zone. As I mentioned, it's a very um, configurable, multi-purpose unit. Um, it works in HD mode, it works in UHD, it works in true 4K, which is true cinematic, 17 by 9 4K, or UHD. Um, will support high dynamic range uh, and high frame rate, um, and interfaces both into the conventional SDI-based world and also into the IP-based world. Um, as a native codec, uh, we develop Sony developed the XAVC coder, uh, but also we can uh, have a native recording on the drive inside in DNX HD or ProRes itself on on the drive, um, uh, the drive, the memory inside the unit. Uh, the system can be expanded. The simple single box can support up to uh, eight channels of HD recording, or four channels of 4K, uh, and you can mix and match uh, different formats on different channels. Um, the system as standard comes with two terabytes of internal storage, which can be expandable up to eight terabytes, which gives a total recording capacity in HD mode in standard um, speed, uh, standard motion for up to 110 hours uh, or 4K up to 24 hours. And this is in a 4U box. Um, and depending on options, we've got a very good integration support with third party systems such as Avid, uh, EVS and Adobe. It's a scalable system, um, and I will go through these options, but the, the hardware itself, you have the server, different I.O. cards, memory, different control panel options, and then different interfaces. And then there are some software options uh, for different uh, uh, um, flavors. Uh, for example, high frame rate, which gives up to H times HD, um, 4K and HD cutout, so uh, 4K recording, and also the ability to produce an HD down convert from 4K. Uh, and then, as I've just mentioned, also we have the ability to record in DNX HD, ProRes, as well as um, transcode um, the, the, the content from one format to another directly from the server. So these are software licenses which can be added to the system as it expands. The base unit itself, um, it's a 4U rack mount box. Um, as, as if you've just bought PWS 4500, this is what you would get. It's a, it's a one box. It supports uh, four channels of HD, and the channel can either be input or an output. Uh, it will do high frame rate up to 150 frames a second. We're linking with this Sony HTC 4300 camera. Um, it has two terabytes of RAM um, storage, and I'll talk a bit more about the storage in a moment. Uh, and has um, various network interfaces for sharing of content, and we will also talk a bit about more of that uh, as we go through the presentation. Importantly, the, for live operation, the, the unit also comes as standard with a main and a backup supply, and it only needs one to work, so you've got a hot redundant power supply um, all the time. Uh, the first expansion of the system you could put in it would maybe to add a 4K license, and in this case, you've expanded the uh, the channels or you've expanded the format scope to support um, two channels of 4k so now you can have either uh, 
two in, no outputs, one in, one out, or two outputs, and you just define it through the software um, where you want it to be an input or an output. Um, the next step of expansion is to fully equip it with the IOs. So if you, you notice that the slots which were previously empty um, are now got uh, additional BNCs. So you've got now true uh, eight channel in HD or four channels in, in 4K. Um, and also in this example, we've added the high frame license to give you up to 400 frames a second, eight times super motion um, recording on, on the unit in 4K. Then to fully configure the option, the only other option to put in is the uh, IP connectivity board. So in that case, the top right hand side at the back um, has now got some IP connectors for linking into um, future IP based uh, infrastructure sys based systems. But across the whole system, it's uh, uh, the standard options, two terabytes of storage and all the 10 gig networks and we're on the power supply. OK. The memory itself, um, it's a solid state recorder, so there's no moving disk, there's no magnetic disks inside. It's a, a flash based RAM system. Um, as I've mentioned, it comes with two terabytes of standard. Um, if anyone is, is aware of the previous Sony SR generation of memory recorders, it's basically the same as that um, on a um, PCB rather than the uh, removable cartridge. So when we say two terabytes, actually it's four terabytes in memory on the on the on the on the card, but it's actually formatted to um, double up all the recording. So it's two terabytes of usable capacity in it. Um, it's virtually indestructible. Um, we have not lost content which have been recorded on the drive because of the uh, the RAID um, striping of the material onto the memory. Two terabytes comes as standard, so one of these boards, and you can expand the system with an additional one, two, or three cards to give you up to uh, eight terabytes in total. Um, and when it's got the eight terabytes in total, that gives you up to 40, uh, 28 hours of 4K or 110 of uh, HD 50i materials. But what you need to do is obviously divide that by the number of channel recordings. So if you've got, if you're doing two lots of 4K recording, you've got then uh, 14 hours of 4K on each channel. So it's just a capacity versus the um, number of channels you're recording. Okay. Um, for the technical uh, among you, there's a better picture of the of the rear panel showing how the IOs are configured. Um, if we look quick, quickly ac across one of these cards, if it's an input card in 4K, the first four BNCs are the input, the second four are a loop through output. And then outputs 9 and 10 are actually an HD down convert. So whatever you're doing and when you're recording, you've always got two HD down converts of your 4K input. If you're working as a 4K playback, you've got two lots of 4K output. And again, you have an HD down convert. If you're working in HD mode, then these can be just a um, an, another output, an HD monitoring output, which is used. Also conveniently, on the bottom slot, there are two additional BNCs here, a part in addition to the reference connections, and these actually give you a quad split of your recording channels. So you can see on these two uh, BNCs, uh, it's actually more than a quad split, it's a multi-view monitor which you can configure to show the, the channels you are recording. So even if you're doing three channels of 4K recording, you can see, and one of playback, you'll be able to see all four 4K channels in a quad, quad view monitor on there. So very useful monitoring outputs, uh, quad split. Uh, there's remote control for standard integration with uh, on RS-422 and other network connectivity for um, sharing of content which we can look a bit more further at as we go through so that's the hardware itself but there's far more to the the pedos 4500 system than just the hardware uh, we've got various software packages which enhance the operation and what i'd like to do now is explain briefly how how we build the system into a, a working solution So the first application, and I think um, I can confidently say this is the one which has seen the most uh, uh, success in, is as a master recorder. Uh, many uh, companies have purchased the unit just to have a high quality 4K master recorder. And with the ability to record up to four channels in one go uh, on a 4U box, it's a very good um, solution for some space um, critical applications. Um, 
it's an ideal solution for master recording. Uh, it's a very high quality codec. Uh, as I've mentioned, it supports XAVC coding. Uh, in UHD, we do class 300 and class 480, which is a, a higher bit rate, so it's slightly less capacity, but gives you a better quality output. So for, for really your grade one recordings, we can do class 480 uh, XAVC recording on it. Um, the XAVC profile have also been optimized for high dynamic range, and the next slide shows a bit more about that. If you don't want to use the Sony codec, um, natively on the memory, we can also uh, record uh, in DNX HD, in ProRes HD, and ProRes HQ HD as well, as a native uh, recording on the memory inside, if you buy the relevant licenses on top. As I've mentioned, it's a very fast and secure flash memory based uh, system um, and there is a salvage function. So if you do boot the system up and it has lost your content, there is a salvage function. It can rebuild the data. Um, so it is very, uh, very robust data. Um, we offer as standard a high speed 10 gigabytes network uh, for transfer uh, for external devices. So we can re be simultaneously recording uh, two streams of 4K onto the internal memory and at the same time uh, streaming them out onto uh, external media. And as long as your bandwidth of your uh, IP connectivity is sufficient, you will get real time recording onto your external data uh, drives. And we have a very simple software package to allow for basic application uh, control recording control when i mentioned the codec is being optimized for hdr uh, the uh, engineers in japan have um, adjusted the performance of the codec to work in hdr mode and maybe it's not greatly viewable on the on the images on screen but you can see here um, the highlights there's a better graduation of the highlights in the hdr after optimization than before optimization and we do support, uh, in terms of recording on the disks, it will support SDOG3, hybrid log gamma, and also PQ um, content natively on the disk. So a very, very simple way of doing using the system as a 4K master recorder is you have got the server box. You can control it via a standard RS-422 remote controller, be it an editor, be it a switcher, um, or third-party um, 422 device controllers that would do play stop record um, and load media and things like that so with the simple bnc connections you can record your channels directly onto the server into its memory and then via an ftp process and something like a filezilla bit of software you can get the content off your um, internal media and put it on external storage another feature we can offer in uh, 4k mode is uh, we can automatically generate an HD uh, down a uh, lower resolution, well HD being a lower 4K uh, content on drive. It consumes more media because you're recording two streams, but you can generate automatically a 4K image as well as an HD image at the same time on your uh, memory. But to simplify this operation, rather than having 42 control and using an external um, FileZilla or something like that, we have a bit a uh, very simple Windows application called PWA RCT1 ISO record software. That is just a, a bit of Windows software um, which is, sits on a Windows 10 or 8 laptop and that just connects directly to the network of the, of the server. And this is basically a VTR controller package for the server. Um, I've got a screenshot on the next slide that shows you the, uh, the image slightly more, slightly better. Uh, through this we can control each port of the server and we can also interface to your external devices for offloading content and uploading content onto the server itself. Uh, there's a, a screenshot um, and in this example the device you can see on the top part of the screen has been set for five record channels and two playback channels. Simply once you're ready to go you push all record or individual records per channel and then the, the channels will automatically go into record and a recording uh, file will be generated which you can name on the server content window at the top here. So here you can see the five red dots of the five channels being recorded. As soon as they start recording you can drag one of these clips into one of these playback windows and you can play back the recording so you can record and playback at the same time. Simultaneously, you can also export the uh, content from the drive onto external media. And here you can just about see C drive, D drive, or any network attached storage. So you can offload content in real time to external media. 
Uh, from the latest version, there's also the ability to upload content. I know there's only an error going one way here, but in the next version, there's an upload content to allow you to ingest content onto the server as well. It's very simple, very effective uh, 4K or HD recording package for the server. It's just a Windows application license. If you want to do slightly more and move into a sort of more of a scheduled application, uh, we launched at IBC last year, a show called Ingest Scheduling. Uh, software and then this will allow you to schedule recordings over time um, so you just leave your servers running you say a program will start at six o'clock tonight it will boot the schedule as much as your home domestic uh, recording box will go into record at that time record the input and you can also set it to stream out at the same time so uh, automated recording scheduler for that so that's the master recorder Another application uh, we can offer for the server is the sports replay market. Um, and we know here we're obviously competing with a, a market leader, but I think we've got a few advantages now um, over their, their operation. Um, but the key thing about our operation is it's very similar to this market leader's operation. So any operator who is familiar with, uh, with their operation will be, within minutes be able to drive our system and create uh, stunning visual effects with our unit. Uh, just as a comparison, there are the two control panels, uh, EVS on the left-hand side, the Sony one on the right-hand side. You see remarkable similarities um, and, and menu buttons. Um, and although we haven't got a um, LCD display uh, attached to the menu, there is an option available for that. Also, on the bottom of the uh, actual VGA output, you get the, the soft key buttons uh, laid out on there. Um, we, these are some of the screens from the PRC1 or the slow motion application. There's a viewer mode, which allows you to see what's recording, what's playing back on each channel at the same time with uh, the sort of clip names and time code data on, on the display. We've got the, in the center of the top, we've got the clip list. So once you created a clip, it, auto, clip, it is automatically registered in the banks here um, for subsequent playback. Once you've registered your clips, you can then create a playlist and you can drag and drop clips from your playlist, from your library into your playlist viewer. And you can see thumbnails of them being imported. Uh, this works with the touchscreen as well. So you just you drag a clip um, across and insert it wherever you want, just by your fingers on touchscreen. The other mode we can do is a 4K, uh, sorry, a HD cutout of 4K uh, content. Uh, this has proved very popular in America, for example, baseball with um, uh, home runs and things like that. And they've really zoomed into the action um, of the uh, the batsman running around onto the home plate and things like that. Um, and you can timeline the control of this. So as you move around, um, the uh, you can when you recall the image, the, the clip, the tracking can follow the action as you set. Newly supported also is metadata handling, um, and you can. Uh, tag your content so for example with football you can put your football name uh, players names you can put goal offside penalty whatever so as soon as it happens you click either with a mouse or with a touch screen uh, for example messy offside messy goal whatever it then is registered that as a clip name you can then archive by that later on or search by those clips uh, later on for your logging What also makes the system very powerful is we have a SharePlay network, which allows you via a 10 gig network, which is standard on all our units to link your servers together. Much like other manufacturers have got another net, we have got a SharePlay network. Um, once you do that, from one server, you can have access to other people's content. So for example, here, we have a highlight operator on the right-hand side. He's doing the highlights, and then he's picking up content, or she's picking up content from any of the other um, operators, so a slow motion operator, um, one with high frame rate here. And from the main operator, you can pick their content, you can copy it across, or actually not, not even copy across, you just put their content onto your playlist. So when you come to the clip running, you can, you're playing back their content all through the network. It's not consuming any BNC inputs and outputs, it's just this uh, Ethernet backbone 10 gig net switch. Um, Another feature of this is we can integrate with the, the newly available uh, hypermotion camera from Sony, the HTC 4800, which allow you to, um, in 4K up to eight for eight times, I think it's HD up to 16 times, 
uh, real time, real super motion content, uh, link that into standard motion for your highlight operators to uh, produce your normal playback clip. Um, just another shot about the HD cutout from a 4K image, and you can mark this and track it, and you can decide what options happen uh, depending on your 4K action. Another key um, solution in our uh, sports replay um, operation, uh, we'll come on to a bit later, but we can link our system into an EVS system. Um, so we will talk about that with third party integration in a second. So once we've got all this content on the memory, uh, what can we do with it? Well, you know, we need to offer solutions to manage this content as well. So we have a media gateway package. Uh, the media gateway package is a, a master um, database uh, application which sits across um, multiple servers. Um, you get very much like a Windows uh, file manager window which you can see multiple servers connected here and then you can set rules to archive material onto a local drive onto a network drive um, so it's your, your management of your content um, as part of this there is a content viewer uh, we're using our catalyst Sony's catalyst browse engine so you'll be able to click on any content and play it back through your PC screen to see the, what the content is uh, we can auto archive uh, for uploading content, we could have a watch folder on a network, so whenever a content has been edited maybe by a third-party system, they can load their content to a watch folder, which is then automatically uploaded into the server memory itself. Through this application, we also transcode to different formats. We can do uh, MPEG long gop, we can do um, various other movie formats uh, through the uh, license in here to transcode your output according to what you want your archive content to be. And then we offer integration with Avid, Adobe, um, and EVS, amongst others, for third-party integration. Um, slightly more advanced, again, than the, con the Media Gateway is a content management system, which allows uh, gives you greater control um, over your archiving. Um, and this links in with the uh, metadata creation, which I spoke about earlier. So from this, uh, you can browse and search clips using metadata, which the operators have entered, like goal or one star, two star, three star rating. And as soon as this clip is created, this software will then automatically archive it. So you know that you've got your best content archived for later editing and use. Uh, you can set up very various rules in here to archive according to whatever you want to do. So, so it really is a complete set of workflows we can offer with the 4500. It's not just a sports motion server. We can do a, a playout automation. Uh, you know, we can integrate it with a switcher for playback. Uh, we can integrate it with pl uh, playout control systems for 4K playout, for example. We've got the um, sports replay application, which we've been talking about. We can use it for uh, 4K master recording. Uh, we can use it for archive. It really is up to your imagination. Uh, what we want to do with it. But then we need to work with the third parties as well, um, of course, you know, we're not an island on our own, we need to integrate with third party as well. Um, so one application, and we will be demonstrating this at an open day um, slightly later in, well, I won't say this month, in late February or mid-February, uh, we'll be demonstrating this at FinePoint. Uh, we'll show the uh, server working with um, XT3 EVS machines. So in this case, we can seamlessly integrate uh, a network of servers using our media gateway, the unit I spoke about. And in this case, we take content from the uh, server itself uh, into a shared folder onto the uh, media gateway. Uh, and then we'll then kick it out into EVS uh, gateway via X square and XT access and in it's ingested uh, into an EVS XT3. Uh, various options of file format. We can do XAVC to XAVC if it, EVS will support the XAVC. Uh, we can transcode it to DNxHD um, if you need to, or we can work DNxHD throughout. So we can integrate content into an XT3 server. So once we've got content on the Sony, an EVS operator can pick it up and use it as part of their um, operation in their truck. So you can add a Sony server to an EVS network without much problem. Another integration we offer uh, very strongly with is uh, Avid for editing. Uh, in this case, we have to um, record on our server in DNxHD natively, uh, but that's um, 
needs to go through our media gateway. It's then rewrapped from the record Sony format OP1A to the AVID format OP Atom. So it's basically wrapping of the, uh, the data, and it can then be ingested into via interplay into um, an AVID a Nexus storage, which can be edited. Um, we can edit a growing file inside AVID, so you don't have to wait for the file to be completed. Once the editor is happy with it, as I mentioned earlier, they can post it into a watch folder um, on the on the ISIS system. Uh, the media gateway will see this content and begin ingesting it back into the uh, Sony server, which you can then play out and use as part of your uh, playback um, material for maybe half time or uh, in interval material in your production. And then the last integration I want to talk about here is um, we offer an integration via a third-party company called Moveit. They've worked, up, they've done the plugin for Adobe Premiere, um, which allows you to do very similar to Avid with uh, Adobe as well. So you record your content uh, onto the server, and it's transferred onto a network drive via the media gateway. And it's then ingested into um, Adobe Premiere uh, via the little app plugin they put into to their screen on the bottom left here it's ingested um, and then editing again can start on the growing files the MXF files and they can either work on a UHD or the HD copy um, and the, the two are reflected uh, they're then sent back onto the uh, NAS drive and imported back into the PWS 4500 if requested um, and then transcoded into a backup for uh, archive systems as well so full editing workflow with adobe uh, courtesy of move it a plugin for their system and there's just a, a bigger screenshot of, of their integration uh, the, the plugin that movie generated themselves is this bottom left hand window uh, where you can see they did the different clips um, as they're being recorded on the server you can edit them so really uh, the pws 4500 is a an open platform uh, you can build your own solution um, from, from simplest form you just you, you IO commands via open protocols with VDCP for machine control Ethernet um, something like FileZilla for data management uh, for FTP so we have got a complete way you build your own system according to what uh, you require and we can help you with any protocol documents for that so in summary um, it's a multi-port uh, production server. It supports HD, UHD, mix, mix of the both. You can set each port independently. High dynamic range, uh, IP connectivity, and high frame rate content. It really is a versatile box. Uh, it supports XAVC, DNxHD, uh, and ProRes codecs as standard, or depending on the options you put in them. In HD mode, we can support, record up to eight channels, in 4K up to four channels, and you can do you know, three in, one out, two in, two out, things like that, for example. Um, we can record up to 110 hours natively in the internal memory or up to 24 hours in 4K. And we have very powerful integration with Avid, EVS, and Adobe. But uh, rather than me just spouting on for ages about what uh, what it can do, please come and experience it, as I mentioned. Um, hopefully some of you will make the uh, live production day at Fine Point uh, towards the end of February when we'll be showing the system working also with integration with EVS. So thank you very much for your time. Are there any questions? <laughs>